Welcome everyone to another audio recording and today we are going to be talking about all the aspects surrounding neuro, N-E-U-R-O, which is a combining form meaning nerve, nerves, nervous system used in the formation of compound words, neurology. The next word is neurodistinct, which is an alternative term for neurodivergent, which refers to people whose brains process information in a unique way than most people. The term emphasizes the distinct strengths and abilities of neurodistinct people. The next word is neurodivergent, which describes people whose brain differences affect how their brain works. That means they have different strengths and challenges from people whose brains don't have those differences. The possible differences include medical and learning distinctions or other experiences. The next word is neuroindigenous, which is to be neurodistinct and in conversation with, admiration of, and respect for one's indigenous and ancestral ways of knowing and being. I discovered this term via Benani, founder of Black Neurodiversity. The next word is neurodecolonization, which is a concept that explores how colonialism has shaped the minds and brains of indigenous people and how to heal from the resulting trauma. Neurodecolonization practices include mindfulness, active movement, demystifying colonization's language, identifying useful tools and frameworks, building new neural networks, deactivating ineffective neural networks, and ancestral ritual. The next word is neurospicy, which is a way to describe neurodivergence in a less clinical way and can be a good option for people who are still figuring out their neurodistinction. Being neurospicy is about depth and complexity, capturing the extraordinary intense and sometimes fierce aspect of neurodistinct people. The next word is neurodiversity which describes the idea that people experience and interact with the world around them in many different ways. There is no one right way of thinking, learning, behaving, and differences are not viewed as deficits. The word neurodiversity refers to the diversity of all people. It can be used in the context of sometimes autism spectrum disorder, known as ASD, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, or other learning distinctions. Neuroinclusion is the next word, which is the practice of creating environments that value and accommodate people with neurological differences, such as those with autism, ADHD, or dyslexia. It's a key component of accessibility and aims to create environments where people with neurological differences can thrive. I'm going to read something that I discovered on the platform of Black Neurodiversity that has been created by Benani. It reads as follows, Neurodivergent versus Neurodistinct, Language to Consider. How we describe ourselves is important. The language we use to identify ourselves can either empower or reinforce systems of oppression. Ableism tells us we diverge from the norm that we are not normal. The belief in a normal is what perpetuates violence and exclusion of those who experience such divergences. Normal only considers one way of being one way of thinking, one way of communicating. To diverge from that norm elicits othering, marginalizing, and exclusion. When I came upon the term neurodistinct by Tim Goldstein, I was relieved to have finally found a term that did not perpetuate neuroableism. Neuroableism, the special kind of ableism that just for neurodistinct folks, the one that tells us that our sensory experiences, social cognition, and communication are wrong, abnormal, and need to be treated or cured. Internalizing neuroableism can look like calling ourselves neurodivergent. We do the work of our oppressors for them. Now, some people may, some people may say, but I'm not normal, and I don't want to be. Sure, but that's not the point. The point is, normal does not exist. What does exist is us distinct and unique beings. 
And I wanted to share this to express that for myself in particular, I am content with having found the word neurodistinct and it is the word of preference that I use going forward. And as I shared before, when I was misdiagnosed and had received my second and third assessment and those assessors said, we don't have a word that would fit in the DSM-5 to necessarily embody what we have assessed you to be. However, empath would be the closest term in this language. And I've been doing thorough research from since misdiagnosis in 2018 till now, and that research is always going to be ongoing. And as such, I have discovered the word neurodistinct. And as I have shared here, and the different aspects and terminologies surrounding the word neuro, and sharing the difference between divergent and distinct, I have come to a place of clarity that neurodistinct is the best word to describe me, as well as the word sentient. And this is where I said I will also share more around the clairs, where there is clairsentient, clairaudient, clairvoyant, etc. Because these are gifts in our medicine and often show up in those of us that are neurodistinct. I intend that this audio recording has been helpful. And as always, if you all have any questions, any comments, or any thoughts you want to share, you can always share down below in the comment section of where this audio recording has been posted. And if you're not comfortable with that, you can always email me at isetstyle at gmail.com. It is always a pleasure to share space time and energy with you all and it is beautiful to be inside of this frequency with you all i would like to remind you all to embrace your nature it has the roots to restore you i intend you all have a luminous odyssey in your neurodistinction in your sentience and i am i set and i set the mic